Hi there, I'm Andrew Bunnell, and today let's look at how to do the projectile energy experiment in Origin. First off, let's take a quick uh, tour through the, um, to, through the experiment. So first off, we already collected some data from uh, projectile motion. There was a short video taken, and the ball traveled along a path, and we first calibrated our image by rotating it, and then we also calibrated our pixels to meters, by using the ruler. Then we clicked on each point as it traveled through the, the path and uh, we were able to get some data. Now today it, there's a little warning to say that if you didn't really do that good of a job you're going to have to recalibrate the image. You're going to have to return it and then rescale it. So let's quickly fade over and take a look at the picture. So right here is the picture and uh, remember that ruler right there. Uh, there's two little pieces of green tape. You're going to go to the top of the green tape, to the top of the green tape, and that's one meter. Also, that pink plumb bob that's right in there, oops, uh, that's right in there, you're going to have to draw a line from the bottom to the top, and then subtract 90. And that will get you the correct calibration angle. And if you didn't have good data, don't worry about it. Maybe your lab partner this week does, um, and you can use that file. But if, you, if both lab partners don't have good data, it's okay. You can take five minutes to redo this part of the experiment. This is a shorter experiment just for that reason. And so you can take a few minutes to redo it. All right, moving down. Let's fade back over to this other screen. Uh, there we go. And uh, the pre-lab questions shouldn't be too tough. You've learned how to do derivatives of uh, projectiles or deltas of projectiles. Uh, next, uh, there is some talk. There are some pre-lab questions that you might have to look through the discussion to figure it out, or maybe even through the procedure. So heading down through the discussion, um, there is one quick little note. Make sure you don't use a single letter like K because it might get for kinetic energy because it might get confused with column K. So instead, use a long name like KE or just type in kinetic energy. Now the first part is to actually go back and look at your previous work. Uh, is it look clear? Can you understand it? Do you understand the formulas you typed in? Uh, yes and no. So let's go ahead and quickly click over there and here's my sheet from last time. And I'm first taking a quick look and I see, yep, I have titles on all my columns. So I know what I did. Now this column right here, it has a formula. And I understand that formula. I'm looking through and saying, yeah, I think I understand most of it. What is this formula? It's time, so the index, oh yeah. So you're supposed to do the same thing. You're supposed to make sure you have titles and uh, on units, and then on your graphs, you're supposed to have um, this fit box, and uh, you're supposed to have a better title than I, I put. Um, and then same thing with this projectile in the x-direction. All right, so now you can resave this file. File, save as. And I'm going to say, now I'm going to call it projectile E. You should include both your partner's initials. You might want to rename this one, projectile energy, and go ahead and hit save. Now you can delete all the graphs you don't need and all the, the columns you don't need. So I'm just going to highlight those three and right-click delete. And they're gone. Now on this, there's a lot of fitting that I don't need. And so, for example, there and there. But these tabs are a little bit trickier. And so what I recommend doing is coming up in this top little box over here and delete everything except for sheet one. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to delete that one, that one, that one. I'm going to keep going. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And right-click delete. Yes. Uh, there we go. Now I'm just left with the data. And what columns of data do I need? Well, I can keep my time and my position and my z position and my x ref and my z ref and the uncertainties that I calculated from standard deviation and residuals. Okay, so that's coming through to clean up your worksheet. And now we can go on to model energy. So first we need to find the kinetic energy. We need to find, and to do that we need Vx and Vz. 
And remember, you can use analysis, mathematics, differentiate, open dialog. And you can set recalculate to none and then delete the first and last rows. I mentioned this in the in a previous experiment. But just remember, when you do the calculation, it can't calculate the first and the last rows. And so you have to go back and set it to ma manual or none and then delete them. Then we're going to create a scatter plot to find out what the uncertainties are. Then we're going to go back in and find out the, the um, kinetic energy. And then we're going to add up the two, because they're orthogonal, we can actually add up the, the Vx and the Vz together, the two velocities. Then a little bit further, we can calculate the potential energy due to gravity based on just the, the mass and the gravity and column Z. And now that I'm remembering, I think this might be missing the, the weight of the ball. So we'll have the ball out and we'll have the scale in the class and we can weigh the, the ball. Then, um, then you can add the two, kinetic energy and potential energy due to gravity, and you'll notice that it's a relatively flat line. What do we mean by relative? Depending on how you calibrated the image, it might look a little bit sloped. It might be losing a little energy, or it might be gaining a little energy. And there'll be a little bit of review at the end, remembering what our uncertainties were uh, about what could cause that. And so let's get to it and go through these steps pretty quick. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take um, the x ref with according to time and now does it matter z position or x position or x ref it really doesn't because if you were to change if you're taking the derivative that y intercept and shifting it over won't change our slope and so i'm going to hold down that button actually i'm not going to hold down that button i'm just going to go to analysis mathematics um, differentiate and open dialog and i just want to do a first order I don't want to smooth it. I actually want to choose none. I just want to do the calculation and choose none. Okay? And I'm going to do the same thing with ZREF. And I'm going to go to Analysis, Mathematics, Differentiate, Open Dialog. And this time I'm going to choose none and hit OK. Now, if we look at those two, two graphs, it did, or those two columns, it did actually put a number in the first. Two, and so I'm going to click that, and I'm going to delete, let's see, delete, and delete. My delete button isn't working. Let's try this delete. All right, so let's click there. Oh, I accidentally sent it to manual or auto. I meant none. Okay, that would have caused it. Okay, now I'm going to quickly scroll to the bottom and delete this last two as well. Okay. Now, to find the uncertainty in the velocity, let's just rename this one, Vx and Vz. And this is going to be in meters per second and meters per second. Oh, I missed a per second. Now, to find the uncertainty, we're going to plot velocity versus time. And so I'm going to highlight velocity. I'm going to highlight time. I'm going to click the three dots down there in the corner that I'm usually covering. There we go. And now this doesn't look like a whole lot. It kind of looks like there's a trend this way, but it, notice the scale over here. Now if I was to zoom out on the scale a little bit uh, by double clicking the, the scale, and I said if I didn't want it so tight, let's say like I wanted to go from 1 to 4, you'll see that it looks much more like a line. Apply, okay. Now it looks much more like a flat line, and we can actually uh, fit a line to it. Or we could just do statistics on column on this set of data. I think the procedure says to, to go through and fit a line, but sometimes I show you something a little bit different so that you can think about it. Let's go ahead and do auto, and I want to do quantities, and what I really need is the mean and the standard deviation. That's all I need. And so my screen's a little too small, so I'm going to click back over there and then click OK. And let's go look at it. Now my mean was 2.137 and my standard deviation was 0 0.04057. But as a reminder, we only need to have the, we only need to round to one digit. So let's go back over here. 
and add in a column plus and I'm going to maximize the screen just for a second. Oh, it's still a little too small. Oh, now it's gone. And now it's too small. So I gotta actually drag this out so that I can. There we go. Get these little buttons over here. So this is gonna be the error in VZ. And this is also gonna be in meters per second. And I said 0 0.04. Now I can highlight this. And my buttons are still not there. i got to drag it out even a little further. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and add in another column. We're going to do the same kind of thing for Z. So this is going to be error in VZ meters per second. So we're going to highlight column velocity in Z and highlight column A. And we're going to hit those three dots in the corner down there that I usually cover. And now notice we can't take statistics on column like we did on the last one. We could have fit a line with slope 0 uh, on the last one, but this one we can't fit a line with slope 0. And so we're going to do analysis fitting, linear fit, open dialog. We can set the quantity or the uh, calculate to auto. We can't change the unchecked reduced chi squared because of how our data is, or because we don't have error bars to our data yet. But we can go to residual plots and uncheck all those. So click all those and then go ahead and click OK. Let's go look at the results. Yes. And now if I come down to the residuals, we have data that kind of look like the X data. And so now we can do statistics on column. But instead of doing statistics on column, I'm going to show you where that data is located. So if you go back to your book, here's where that residual plot was. And if you click on the next tab and you uncheck all those residual plots, Except for the first one, column D, regular residual of column, uh, regular residual of sheet one is where the data is located. So I can highlight that and I can do statistics on that column. I can go to quantities and standard deviation is checked. I can go to auto and I have to click back to hit OK. And let's go look at that sheet. Now I have a standard deviation of 0 0.031, but I only need one digit because it's not a rule of one or because it's not a one or two. Now I got to make this shorter again so that I can see this little tab line a little bit easier. So the uncertainty is 0 0.03. Okay, now we have to add in a couple more columns. So let's just scroll back up to that. And we got to do uh, one half times mass times the column of the VX squared plus the column of the VZ squared in parentheses. Now you're going to say, well, what about the squared of the squared? Well, to find the resultant between two orthogonal vectors, we would take the square root of the one plus the square root of the other and then take the square root. But then that square root cancels with the squared, and so we're just left with this. So let's just go ahead and do that. And um, let's go ahead and add in a column right there. And this is going to be KE. Remember, don't list it as K because it will get confused with that column. So KE, and this is in joules. Oops. Joules. And so our formula is going to be equal to 1 half or 0 0.5 times it by the mass. And uh, I forgot to weigh the ball. So, um, and it's in, it's in the cabinet right now. So I'm going to try to remember, I think it's 13.6 grams, but we have to then convert it to kilograms. So that would be 0 0.0136. But don't take this as your number. Take what you measure in lab, okay? And then you have to times it by um, column H squared plus column BZ squared in parentheses. So that's going to be column H quantity squared plus column J quantity squared parentheses. And there we go. We got uh, the potential energy sorry, the kinetic energy. Now we have to find the error in kinetic energy. And this one is a little bit, oh wait, it's not in K, it's in J, <laughs> in joules. Okay, now this formula is a little bit tricky. It's kind of long and it looks a little scary, but don't worry about it. If you want to see how this is derived, you can always go to Appendix B. Near the end, it does a, it does a um, calculation for this. And it's just M times the square root of the uncertainty, or the column squared times the uncertainty squared plus the column squared times the uncertainty squared. Okay.
Now, to make it a little easier, I'm going to right-click Open Dialog so that I have this dialog open because with longer formulas, sometimes it's harder, hard to see the whole thing. And so now I'm going to do um, the mass of the ball, which I said was 0 0.0136. Once again, use whatever you measure in class, SQRT. And it's the square root of the first two. So it's I squared times J squared plus the second two squared. So that's K squared times, 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 times L squared. Now if your error bars are really big, there's a good chance that you did plus instead of times right there. Let's go ahead and hit apply. Okay. And now if I look at the size of my error bars compared to the size of my kinetic energy, we can see that it's kind of small, and then it gets smaller. And as we go down to the bottom, it would get bigger again. Okay, great. So now we need another column. And let's go ahead and click the plus column button. And now we need uh, potential energy due to gravity, so PEG. And if you're in the calculus-based class, you could say UG, but let's do potential energy G. Okay, so now in the formula, it's just MGH, MGH. So I said my mass was 0 0.0136 times it by 9.8 times it by h. Well, what is our h? Well, our h is our column. Let's see. Our h is our column all the way back in column C. So let's do 9.8 times column capital C. There we go. Now, it says in the procedure to ignore the uncertainty of the scale because it's small enough to ignore. So let's just use the um, Let's just use the uncertainty of um, the position. And so how are we going to do that? So let's go ahead and click plus. And it's going to be error of PG, no, PEG. That's going to be in joules. So our uncertainty in, um, in uh, position was our... Um, uncertainty right here. Actually, I'm going to change that last column to F and G. Okay, so it's F. So instead of C, I'm going to use F, and that changes stuff a little bit, but that's okay. Now I'm going to change this one to um, column G. So it's uh, 0 0.0136 times it by 9.8 times it by the uncertainty, and that's going to be... Um, on G, times it by G. And guess what? Our uncertainty is the same the whole way for column, um, or for the for potential energy due to gravity. All right, we've got two more columns. We're almost there. Uh, we've been working hard at this. Uh, let's do one for total energy, and then one for error in total energy. Now, total energy is really easy. It's just K, or the kinetic energy, plus the potential energy due to gravity. So let's... Oh, let's, don't forget units. So this is going to equal, now you don't have to need to equal, this is just simply L plus N. And now if we're just adding two things, do you remember what the uncertainty formula is? It's equal to the square root of the first one squared, the uncertainty of the first one squared, so that's M, and then the second one squared. So M squared plus O squared. M squared plus O squared. And there we go. Now we got to change all three of these columns to error bars. So that one to error bars, this one to error bars, and this one to error bars. Okay. Now we got to highlight all six of those. And we got to come back here and also highlight the time column. So I'm holding down the control, and I'm clicking the time, and I'm clicking the three dots in the corner. Now there's my graph. I'm going to go ahead and double click. I'm going to go to symbol, and I'm going to say size 3, so I can see the error bars. And if you look really carefully, the error bars in the kinetic energy start out a little bit bigger, and they get a little bit smaller, and they get a little bit bigger again, while the uncertainty in the, the potential energy due to gravity is the same the whole time. Now, I want you to think about why that is. Why does one get bigger, and then smaller, and then bigger again? Okay? Don't forget to do a title, Energies of a Projectile. But don't just type in mine, energies of a 
steel projectile. Okay. Now, the last thing is, is I, I see that there's a very small, potentially slope, downward slope, uh, in my, which would show uh, loss of energy. And we're just going to do an average quantification of that. And so to do that, I have to select that data set. Let's see what that data set. Now notice how the other two kind of hit away. And we're going to do analysis, fitting, linear fit, open dialog. And this time we can do auto. And we can uncheck reduce chi-squared. And we can uncheck the residual plots. And go ahead and hit OK. And let's go take a look at it. So here is the residual plots. And notice that they look pretty good. And if I go back to book one, I can look at this. And we actually see when it's zoomed in really, really close that there's a very small um, slope to it. Now, it looks really big because of this thing is zoomed in so far. But it's not actually that big. And one quick note, don't edit this graph right here. What I want you to do instead is I want you to go back to the graph that you created and edit this graph. Okay, go back to the residuals for a second. Okay, so now we can find the standard deviation of the residuals, statistics on column, and we can go to auto, we can check quantities, yep, it's checked, we can uncheck everything else if we want, um, click plus here, uncheck there, we also can uncheck there and uncheck there. Now I show you a couple different ways, but, um, which might be slightly different than the procedure, but that's okay. Now right here I got a standard deviation of 0 0.0016. So I can come I can come back and do I change the error bars on this graph? No, I don't. We still report the standard deviation. So SD SD of total energy is equal to 0 0.0016 joules, but we don't change the error bars because of we have different error bars through this whole uh, motion. And the main reason why we have different error bars is the different error bars on the, the kinetic energy. But we can come in here and we can click on this graph. And because I listed that somewhere else, I can go ahead and delete those rows. And I don't have to put standard deviation in there anywhere. I can add a couple columns in. We can type in um, units. And uh, we didn't know what our initial energy was, but this right here, oh, that would be units in J, and this would be units of J per S, which is also equal to a watt. We can delete that. We can delete that. Now, we expected this to be zero, and it's pretty close to zero in my case. Um, if you look at that number, it's about half of what this number is, just a little bit more than half. So if I did a z-score, I would see that it's not, um, not zero. But I would just report that number right there as 0 0.00239 plus and minus. Oops, I can round a little bit. Format cells, decrease digits. And I only need uh, three, four decimal places. And hit OK. Now this other one, because of that, it's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It does have one too many format cells, but I still haven't figured out how to change that E thing. So, so decimal places, four, I hit OK, make an update table. And it zoomed in um, because that's not the graph we wanted. This is the graph we wanted. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually shrink this graph down a little bit and give you some space on it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to double click this scale and I'm going to change the scale to add a little more space at top. So instead of 0 0.013, I'm going to say 0 0.02. Oh, sorry, 0 0.2. And when I do that, notice how all that fell down? So now I have plenty of room to make a big report and I got plenty of room to put this, the, um, uh, the legend on the side. I can still see my data. I can still see my standard deviation. And that's Pretty much it, except for this isn't just kinetic energy right over there. You're going to have to edit this title to change it to what it, this data reflects. Remember, there's three bits of data on here. There's kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy. Ah, let me just show you how to edit this really quick. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight in there, and I'm going to delete this. Okay. Now, to make my graph a little fancier, oops, what happened to my, uh, let's go Control-Z. Control-Z, uh-oh, Control-1, oh no, I've messed things up. So let's cancel that. Control-Y doesn't work on Origin. So let's see if I could get it back. Um, I'm going to double click there. I'm going to see if I can find my, oh no, I think I've, I think I've lost it. Unless I double click down here and see if I can get the title back. Oh no. Title. So that's the title for that axis. And then I can go ahead and double click on this axis and get the title back, hopefully. Title and show. Ooh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> if you accidentally delete your title there, that's how you fix it. All right, so I'm going to say kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy, and units of joules. But I'm going to make it a little fancier than that. All right, so what color is my kinetic energy? My kinetic energy is blue. My potential energy, wait, that is my potential. Is that one blue or is that one black? Uh, that one is kind of a gray. And then... Come on, symbol. And then this one. I don't know why it's doing that to me. Okay. I just got to look really close. Yep, so potential energy is black. The second one is red, and the third one's blue. And so I can actually highlight the text and come up here and change the color of that little bit of text to red, and then change the little bit of text over here to blue. So I hope you have fun and being a little bit artistic on this this graph because it's a little bit shorter of an experiment um, have a little bit fun and make it a little bit uh, more beautiful anyways that's about it for today just as a reminder we want to export these graphs so file export graph open dialog you're going to want to change the location to the desktop so you can find it really easy okay and then also save it as a as a uh, ping image or a bitmap or a JPEG. Ping is, comes out the best. And then you'll copy that into your Word document. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.